Hi, welcome to Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this video, we'll be taking a look at episodes 1 through 4 of I'm the Villainess, So I'm Taming the Final Boss, a show where a sick gamer dies and finds themselves reincarnated in the body of the villainess of their favorite romance game. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be sure you don't miss the next episodes. We open on a blonde woman named Eileen being told by her fiancé that he's dissolving their engagement. She falls to her knees but reflects on how she saw this coming. We then cut to a sick person in a hospital bed, playing a video game. We cut back to Crown Prince of the Elmir Empire, Cedric Jean Elmir, professing that he wishes to spend the rest of his days with Lilia instead of Eileen. She calls him her main romance route, before getting confused as to why she would say that. Eileen then notes that Lilia was a commoner, but now the first daughter of a baron and is the game's female lead. Eileen is then confused as to why she would call her a female lead and refer to a game. Upon being called by her name, Eileen realizes that she is the main villainess of this game. The person in the hospital bed has been reincarnated as the villainess of their favorite romance game. Having played the game before, Eileen says she will depart quietly so as not to make a scene, and smiles happily at Prince Cedric, surprising him as he expected her to cry. Eileen knows from experience that in this game, Lilia defeats the Demon Lord and in the final act, Eileen dies offhand in the battle. But since the person controlling Eileen is now in Eileen's body, if Eileen dies, so do they. Using her memory of the game, she realizes if she can stop the Demon Lord's awakening, her death will never happen. Eileen goes in search of the Demon Lord, with many bad omens marking her path until a group of crows begin berating her. She tells them off, embarrassing them into silence. She tries to open a large locked door, when a voice behind her offers assistance before demolishing the door. She turns and sees that the one who helped her was the absolutely stunning Lord Claude Jean Elmire. She offers to marry him, but he angrily smites a tree with magic, causing her to pass out and reflect on her life. Being the youngest of a baron's children, but a girl, so she saw herself as lesser than her brothers. Cedric proposed to her at age eight, and becoming empress became her dream. She dedicated her life to learning and training to be the best empress possible, but people saw her as stuck up. She slowly wakes to hear Claude speaking to his two aides, Keith and the demon, Beelzebub, about how he didn't mean to drop lightning on the tree. It happened because he'd been so surprised by her proposal. She notes Claude's backstory is that he's Cedric's half-brother, who was stripped of his position at age 10 once his demon heritage was discovered. His hatred of humans is what eventually drives him to turn into a draconic demon lord that kills Eileen, so she has to change this and once again proposes. He asks if she's in love with him, and she says no. He gets angry, saying she would come here so shortly after Cedric dissolved the engagement, but she counters that she did not want to waste a single moment of her life. He repairs her dress and tells her to leave forever, but she is so excited for the magical dress that he blushes, accidentally blooming the flowers with his magic. He hastily sends her home with a magic spell. Her father gives her a letter inviting her to Cedric's engagement party in two months, which will just be another chance for him to publicly reject her. She tries to bring a basket of baked goods to Claude's castle, but is kept out by a magical barrier. She loudly sighs about how she brought the symbol of the gatekeeper, which is a snazzy red bow tie, and the crow guardian is unable to resist. She puts the bow tie on him and gives him an almond cookie. Her entire demeanor changes as the crow tips over and she reveals she laced the cookie with an anesthetic. She threatens to strip it bald if Claude does not come talk to her. He comes and cures the crow and then takes a bite of the apology cookie she offers it, assuring it that it's safe to eat. She then admits to spiking it with a love potion and explains the situation with the engagement party. As they speak with his assistants, news of an escaped Fenrir cub reaches them. She volunteers to go and bring the cub back, taking Claude's scarf in hopes that it will recognize his scent. She admits that she feels bad for it since it's just a cub and probably scared. She finds four students have trapped the tiny monster in a bear trap and are trying to kill it with sticks to become appointed holy knights. She stops them and approaches it. It bites her hand at first, but she talks calmly to it and lets it smell the band around her arm, which calms it as she pets it. She gets thrown to the ground by one of the boys as they once again try to kill the adorable little creature. The mother appears and scares them off, and Eileen frees it from the trap. Just as they vanish through a portal, Cedric and his cronies appear with Lilia, and he accuses her of bringing the Finner to hurt Lilia. 
Cecilia. As they begin to berate her, Claude appears, bowing before her and offering her thanks for taking the blame for a crime she did not commit, shocking everyone and clearing her name. He makes a horse-drawn carriage appear to take her home in. The horse sprouts wings and they fly away in it and he asks her why she wants to marry him. She explains that they're in a game and when he turns into a dragon and goes berserk, he'll kill her and he vanishes the carriage accusing her of making fun of him. As she plummets to the ground, terrified, he catches her, placing her gently on the ground before saying he will go to the ball with her and vanishing with a smile on his face. Eileen's father informs her that Cedric has taken control of her businesses as the contract of their engagement was not well thought out by her and this will financially ruin her. He orders her to fix it. As she walks down the street, a scruffy man named Jasper greets her and thanks her for her help with his newspaper. She goes to Claude and his aides and says she wants to repair the castle with her pocket money. Beelzebub argues they cannot let humans into the castle, but she says she wants to help the workers Cedric let go. Claude agrees, telling Keith to find the money they are owed that has been embezzled by some nobleman to use. She also tells them that she will have Jasper look into the case. She then asks for a little bit of land to use for a croft, and then he agrees to do that as well, before turning her shadow into a demon portal, which the Finner cub jumps out of. She ties a ribbon around its neck and names it Ribbon. She meets up with Jasper, who tells her Cedric is a fool for giving up a good woman like her. Beelzebub catches his hat as it blows away and rebukes him for offending the demon lord as a storm rolls in, caused by his negative emotions, but they're unsure as to why he would be upset. A few moments later, it begins to pour rain as Claude becomes more unhappy. They arrive in the castle and he tells them there is only one rule, do not harm the demons or disrupt their way of life. They ask him what needs repairing, and he snaps his fingers, opening a hole in the ceiling and soaking them. He then closes it and dries them, telling them that he is keeping the castle together with magic and wants it suitable for demons. The humans ask if they can ask the demons directly what they would like done to it. Beelzebub goes with them to be their interpreter, but Eileen stays behind and asks Claude what's wrong. He tells her she seems very close to the people there to help, and she says that she works hard to build trust with her workers. She then asks why that would bother him, and he says he's not sure before vanishing in a puff of crow feathers. The sun comes out and Beelzebub goes with Dennis, the architect, to work on building the perfect demon castle, while Jasper and Keith are going to investigate the embezzled funds. Isaac, Ruck, and Quartz are going to work on manufacturing cosmetics for her new business, which she will test on herself. Cedric, meanwhile, gets wind of Eileen gathering the workers he laid off and bringing them to Claude's castle. We cut back to Eileen getting a progress report from everyone. They have perfumes made, the kitchen is done being constructed, and they have tracked down the embezzler but never actually brought them to justice as they don't want the demon lord squalor being public knowledge. They banter a bit before getting back to work. That night, Eileen is in her bedroom pondering how to best market their products, when Beelzebub appears in her shadow, asking her to teach him manners so he can attend the ball as an aide and not shame Claude. This gives her an idea on marketing the products, and she agrees. The next day, humans and demons are working together happily with the construction, and Claude explains to her that the land was bought from a count for him by Keith who appears behind them with bad news. Someone has been sending threatening letters to Lilia to frame her. She sends Almond, the crow with the bow tie, to investigate, and at first, Claude stops him. But she promises if anything happens to him, she'll beat up whoever did it, as she cares about Almond, too. After a few steamy words, she's blushing and everyone is bright red. He asks her if there's anything he can do for her, and at first, she thinks she should use it to her advantage and have him draw up the engagement papers. But that feels wrong to her, so she asks him to escort her better than any man at the ball. We then see Cedric promising to make Eileen pay for sending the letters to Lilia. We see Almond has acquired the leftover paper that he was tasked with getting. We then see Eileen going to the ball with her father in a gorgeous dress left to her as a gift from Claude. They overhear some ladies at the ball talking about the Oberon Cosmetics Company, which is secretly Eileen's company, and how good their products are. But only select ladies were given samples. It turns out that Eileen intentionally gave samples only to girls with rivalries so that all of them would want them. Happy, her father leaves just as Isaac arrives. He tells her that they have the identity of the one who sent the threatening letter and can release it at any time. But Lilia has gone missing. Cedric and some knights in training have gone to the demon lord's forest, and he told Isaac to watch over her until he can deal with them. She says not to worry about her, and they exchange some banter before high-fiving one another and going about their respective missions. Cedric appears and has her captured. Meanwhile, Lilia appears in the demon land and is brought to 
to Claude. Lilia claims that she is there because she pities Claude and is worried for him. He points out that there are armed guards surrounding his forest because of her. She claims it's a misunderstanding, and Cedric is just worried because of the letters, but he reveals that she wrote them herself. She claims it's because Eileen was going to have rogues kidnap her, and it was the only way to protect herself. She also says Eileen is still in love with Cedric. Claude gets mad but is struck by an unseen power, which he believes is the power of the Holy Sword Maiden that courses through Lilia's blood. She insists that she just wants to make his wish come true because she cares about him, which angers him as he thinks of Eileen. He sends Lilia away with his magic. Meanwhile, Eileen is being restrained by guards in the middle of the ball. She says he has no proof to accuse her with, and then tells him that she has absolutely zero interest in him, which greatly angers him. He grabs her by the face and yells at her, making everyone think poorly of him, when a butler runs in and tells him that Claude has arrived. His anger quickly turns to fear, as the stained glass ceiling shatters, the pieces freezing midair as Claude and Beelzebub drift elegantly down. He snaps his fingers, repairing the ceiling, and tells Cedric that the paltry soldiers he sent to the border of the forest could never possibly take him out. He warns Cedric, quite casually, not to make him destroy the country before apologizing to Eileen for making her wait. As he and Eileen walk away, Cedric calls after Eileen to ask if she truly did not capture Lilia, which she says once again she did not. The look on Cedric's face reminds her of when they were children, and he would cry to her that he could never be beat Claude at anything, and everyone made fun of him behind his back. She has Isaac hand her the letter Almond stole from Lilia's trash, and proves it's the same stationery set that her invitation to the ball is from, which means Lilia sent the letter herself. She signs the end of engagement papers as a crushed Cedric looks on. After the ball, she thanks Claude for escorting her, and says they could not announce the engagement as Lilia was found crying in the middle of the woods. She begins to ramble on and on about how amazing Lilia is, as deep down she's worried worried Claude will fall for her since, theoretically, all Lilia has to do is say the phrase from the game that triggers him to fall in love. He pinches her cheek and assures her that she shouldn't worry as she's cute and Lilia is not his type, which makes her stammer. As he kisses her goodbye, she has flashes of his rage transformation from the end of the game, remembering that it's triggered by a betrayal from the only human he's trusted since he was young. We're treated to a dream sequence from Keith of his joining Claude when he's exiled. As he wakes up, Eileen is in his room and Beelzebub Beelzebub pulls a knife on him. They accuse him of betraying Claude. He's been selling demons, and that is how he bought the land for Claude. Keith has a flashback to himself, almost drowning, as he explains that Claude saved his life using magic, which is what got him ousted for being a demon lord to begin with. He reveals that the reason he sold the demons was because the lord who had sold them the land had pretended his signature was forged, but promised to let it slide if he was given demon slaves. Eileen smiles at him and tells him his weakness is having no human ally allies and offers to be that ally for him. She recognizes this as a plot point in the game. Lilia and Cedric catch Keith in the act, and Claude murders Keith in a rage before turning into a dragon. She slams the table in anger at how cruel it is that the game throws Claude's best friend's betrayal in his face and then uses it against him. We then cut to the gang in the kitchen preparing more cosmetics. As they talk, Almond appears out of her shadow and tells her that Cedric and Lilia are meeting with Claude. They inform him that Keith is selling demons but Eileen interrupts and makes Lilia cry. As Lilia rushes out in tears and Cedric follows, Keith enters and bows before Claude, confessing to what he did, but asking that he be allowed to right the wrongs he has committed before dying. Claude agrees to it, and as he gets the demons in the cage, Eileen explains to Beelzebub that all of the demons volunteered to be sold to help their lord. He's still mad and she pats his head and asks if he's actually mad that Keith did so much for their lord and he feels inadequate now. The Count, who had promised them the land shows up to take the demons, but Keith says he's already sold it to Eileen's father, so the deal is off. Beelzebub blinds them with magic, and Keith steals the account book before defeating three armed thugs. Almond frees the demons and then, based off Isaac's plan, the demons had dug holes in the ground where the rest of the thugs fall into. Almond then drops drugs on them, all of which is technically not breaking the peace pact between demons and humans. Keith locks the humans in the cage and prepares to take them to the knights, where he's struck by Cedric's guard, and Lilia appears with Cedric. Lilia summons a magic sword and cuts Beelzebub as Cedric leers at Eileen, telling her she can be his second wife. 
Cedric knocks Eileen out and takes her captive. Keith and Beelzebub, all beat up, apologize to Claude and explain what happened. Eileen wakes up chained, and Cedric sends Lilia out of the room as he prepares to rape Eileen. She realizes she's in love with Claude as the tower explodes in a whirlwind. Claude is here and his rage is unleashing his dragon form, which is exactly what Claude planned. Lilia can kill him in that form with her holy sword and will be accepted as Empress. Almond frees Eileen just as Claude is about finished transforming. She tries to calm him, but it's too late, and he begs her not to look at him as he finishes the transformation. Lilia moves to strike him down, and Eileen jumps between them, taking the blow instead. Lilia is confused and shocked until Eileen brags that she also has the blood of the Holy Sword Maiden in her veins, and absorbs the sword completely into herself. She hugs Claude's dragon nose and cries, asking them to change back if he loves her. Her tear touches him, and he transforms back, completely naked, much to her shock and embarrassment. Later, as she sleeps, her father speaks with Claude, informing him that in exchange for not telling the public what Cedric had tried to do, she had them reinstate Claude's right to inherit the throne. Initially, he refuses, but her father says he would only want her to marry the Emperor, and so Claude agrees. They publicly announce their engagement and embrace as Claude flies them up and they vanish. A mysterious blonde child appears out of a carriage as the adventure continues.